just uh, maybe just the beginning you can uh, I can begin directly di okay. directly okay okay then I think it's the time it's great we'll uh, start with our next speaker <coughs> I Xiao Jun will be talking about I uh, open Wi-Fi and um, I'll hand it over thank you very much thank you uh, thank you everybody <coughs> I know you are tired or sleepy. Yeah. It's a long afternoon or long weekend. So my presentation will be in a different way. You don't need to ask question. <laughs> <laughs> I will ask question for, for you to myself. In this way, I try to attract you from beginning to the end. <clears throat> First question, very basic. What is open Wi-Fi? It's not the Wi-Fi that gives you open access all over the world. I know there is such a project also called open Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this is not. The answer is that open Wi-Fi in our project, it represents uh, the open source IEEE 802.11 of Wi-Fi chip design. Before this project, I think many people only have one choice, use some commercial Wi-Fi chip. But after this project, you have one more choice, open source Wi-Fi chip. But in this phase, it's not a real Wi-Fi chip yet. It's running in the IPGA. You mu as you must know that IPGA is, a, or IPGA verification is a very important step before you tape out, tape out a real Wi-Fi chip, right? You use IPGA to verify your IC design is correct. So current phase is uh, IPGA design. You can just Google open Wi-Fi. You will find our GitHub <coughs> repository. Currently, I think it's in the uh, top three or top four item in the Google search engine. Uh, well, maybe it depends on your browser or how or, or your most frequent, most frequent searching word in your browser. <laughs> but in my uh, browser, it's the third one. Uh, OK, why we say it's a uh, chip design or Wi-Fi chip? Uh, because it's not like, it's, it works not like the USRP or GNU radio stuff. It really work like a commercial Wi-Fi chip. Uh, you may know or you may not, the commercial Wi-Fi chip actually offer you two things. The first one, the silicon, right? The chip itself. The second thing is the driver. Most of, most of time, I guess, we use the Linux driver. Then that's it, right? You insert the dongle, uh, the driver is auto-loaded, or you install it. That's how commercial Wi-Fi chip works. Our design also works exactly in the same way. We offer you the chip design, which is IPGA currently. We also offer you the open source Wi-Fi driver, which works below the Linux native Mac 802.11 Wi-Fi framework. This framework is used for almost all the commercial soft Mac architecture Wi-Fi chip. We also offer you a very tiny uh, tool, user space tool, to communicate with our driver and uh, IPGA. So that's the basic architecture, as you can see, same as commercial chip. Actually, if you go to our demo, you can use your cell phone to connect our uh, the chip, uh, the Linux run over the chip, and there's host APD. There's a a uh, web server, you can access it, just like you access commercial Wi-Fi router. Nice. OK, next question. I guess in your mind is that is the open Wi-Fi chip better than commercial Wi-Fi chip? Right? That's the quite direct question. Why should I use your chip? Is your chip better? <laughs> the answer is no. And I remind you, this is not a joke. <laughs> Disappointed, right? 
uh, well, as you may know, the, those commercial Wi-Fi chip, uh, they support quite new standard, right? AC, AX, and they support many uh, antennas, right? Advanced MIMO processing, IMU MIMO, or high order MIMO. And they also support uh, very high uh, bandwidth. That means very high throughput, right? 20 macros, 40 macros, until 160 macros, right? Those chips are quite advanced. Unfortunately, our chip in this phase is not as advanced as theirs. Currently, our chip works only in uh, 11, 11A, 11G, and 11N mode. Uh, in all the, all the frequency below uh, 6 gigahertz. That means you can set it in, into uh, 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz, uh, 11 uh, AGN, and uh, currently it only supports uh, 20 megahertz, which means the highest throughput is around uh, 50 or 60 mega BPS, right? The theoretical uh, peak data rate of the physical, physical layer. Um, so it's a technology maybe many years ago the industry has achieved, right? We rebuilt the Wi-Fi chip, chip again by ourselves. Uh, well, I would say uh, maybe so far we identify at least one point, maybe it's attractive or a little bit better than a commercial Wi-Fi chip. Uh, the point is that uh, our design currently is based on the system on chip, the Silinx Zinc uh, IPGA, with the ARM processor embedded. In that case, uh, our full Wi-Fi stack, I mean including the, from the Linux application to the baseband, are in the same chip. As you can see, the red circle, those Linux operating system, user space, kernel, driver, and IPGA, not the front end. All these things in the same chip. So we have one, well, not so big advantage is that if you ping our uh, node, right, because it's Linux, you can ping it, it has an IP address. Your echo speed your, or, or the ping round chip latency is uh, lower than the commercial chip. I think when you do the ping over commercial chip, your round chip ping latency is always, I guess, around uh, one millisecond. Uh, in our design, you can have around 0.6 or 0.7 uh, millisecond. Uh, because it is a SOC, system on chip, right? So that's why we also need to offer you the Wi-Fi driver. You cannot use, use any other commercial uh, Wi-Fi driver. Uh, because the commercial Wi-Fi driver always works over the USB bus or PCIe bus, right? But in this chip, there's no, uh, I mean, the interface between our Wi-Fi chip, which is IPGA, and SDR driver. Here, the interface is not USB or PCIe. It is the Silinx uh, on-chip bus, which is the AXI's dream or AXI memory mapped uh, uh, DMA controller. So that's why we have to develop the Linux driver for this quite special on-chip, low latency, high throughput link for our Wi-Fi uh, design. Okay, if open Wi-Fi is worth, why should I use open Wi-Fi? Uh, well, this is the key part. I try to answer the question to convince you. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, but this time, I remind you, this is a joke. <laughs> so why you should use the open Wi-Fi design? Well, very direct usage of this design is for education, right? It's quite obvious. If you are a researcher or a professor in a university, you try to teach your students how exactly a Wi-Fi chip run? If you buy a commercial Wi-Fi chip that has the black box silicon, you don't know what is inside. How can you teach students know-how knowledge of Wi-Fi chip run? So with this design, you have the full stack, right? Open full stack, 
from the user program in Linux to the antenna. I mean, in the IPGA, we also, there's also logic to control the front end and antenna. As the antenna selection, uh, TX, GAN, RX, AGC stuff, everything works just like those module in a commercial chip. Okay, for the secondary usage, right, there could be many. You may have ideas to improve uh, Wi-Fi chip or customize the Wi-Fi chip for your special application. If you run a business, maybe you have some special customer in the aviation industry or railway industry, right? They have very special requirement to your Wi-Fi communication system. And uh, you may try the commercial Wi-Fi chip at first. Maybe it's perfect for your application. Then you forget open Wi-Fi. If commercial chip is not good enough, you try to tailor or customize the commercial chip, right? You go to the big commercial company. The first question you get will be how many PCS you will buy from our company per year, right? If you say uh, a thousand chips, then I think you don't have any chance. You should try out design, tailored, customized for your special application. And uh, if you are using some full Mac Wi-Fi chip, not the soft Mac, <coughs> which means that the Wi-Fi chip is very complicated. All the Mac layer, link adaptation, everything, advanced control is in the chip. In that case, you don't have full control of the chip from the driver. Maybe you ha you, if you want some special functionality, you need to reverse engineer a little bit the chip firmware in the chip, right? That's the most of the Wi-Fi security researcher or Wi-Fi researcher currently do. They do the reverse engineering of the firmware of the Wi-Fi chip. But with this design, you have the transparent design, uh, the fully controlled functionality. And uh, okay, you want to modify Wi-Fi chip, it's not possible. You want to see uh, how your new uh, component work with Wi-Fi, how your new component will improve performance of Wi-Fi network, such as you make a new PA, right? Uh, high, uh, high power amplifier for long range, you make new LNA, you make new antenna or beam antenna, make new algorithm. You can test your component, your idea, or your algorithm <coughs> on the op over the open Wi-Fi design. Actually, before the project was announced, last Christmas, we already had some seed user in the Orca project, which is the Horizon 2020 European project. And they are using the open Wi-Fi board in our test bed. They, they are doing some amazing thing that I cannot uh, tell here. You will know at the end of the project because we have NDA, I think. So any other related work? I have to answer this question, right? Because otherwise I cannot say my project very proudly that we are the like first blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yes, there are. We are specifically, uh, pre precisely speaking, we are not the first one, strictly speaking. Many researchers in the community has tried the Wi-Fi implementation. Such as the, okay, the first row is our implementation. The second row is from VARP, which is originated from Rice University a long time ago. I think mo um, some of you used that, IPJ design. But it's a pure IPJ. There's no Linux, no native Linux framework, right? Uh, and national instruments, LabVIEW, they have the whole IPJ Wi-Fi application, uh, Wi-Fi design based on USRP, right? With the X300 serial, where big IPJ inside. Uh, if you have budget, yes, you can use national instruments. And also uh, this work, actually this work is also quite good. They also design IPGA Wi-Fi implementation, and they also support MIMO. Uh, but they use the uh, PC as the running the Linux. Uh, they set up the USB between the IPGA board and PC. Compared to them, I think our unique point is the SOC. Our Linux and the Wi-Fi is on the same chip. And uh, Microsoft, okay, long time ago, Microsoft has achieved software real-time processing of the Wi-Fi protocol. Uh, you, you should check that paper. That's a quite amazing result a long time ago. But one uh, little thing I should remind you that 
uh, their implementation actually cannot achieve uh, fully real-time operation of the acknowledgement because Wi-Fi need you make acknowledgement in 10 microseconds, right? That means uh, when you receive packet, you need to do lots of processing and generate acknowledgement in 10 microseconds. In the Microsoft uh, implementation, uh, they can only generate the acknowledgement for long received packet, not for short received packet. Because if the packet incoming is too short, they don't have enough processing time to generate acknowledgement. But for long, uh, packet, long incoming packet, the Microsoft uh, solution, yeah, they can generate the 10 microseconds uh, reply in, in time. Okay, this one from GNU Radio, I guess the author, I met the author, I know the author a long time ago. Many people already use this GR802.11. This is quite good project for, uh, for you do experiment over uh, when you only need transmit or need uh, monitor, right? If you don't need the real-time interaction with commercial chip, this is quite good uh, starting project for the Wi-Fi research based on GNU Radio. I won't go deep. You can check the slides later, find out all the links. Uh, only try to emphasize our unique point is that our design is based on system on chip. You have very low latency between your Wi-Fi card and computer, which is also in the same chip. So is the open Wi-Fi hardware expensive? That's a very important question. Uh, we care this a lot because it, it matters for the community. Uh, actually, uh, if you don't have hardware, right? You don't have budget, you can try the open Wi-Fi in our test bed. Actually, the same test bed uh, as the previous uh, speaker, the, the iLab T in the iMac facility. We have installed open Wi-Fi board, several boards there. You can try it remotely. If you have budget, right, you can uh, use this quite small uh, software defined radio board, system on module, I think uh, built by uh, an analog device, Zinc uh, IPGA and uh, analog device front end on the same module. Uh, we have ported design on it. Uh, we will port the design to more and more boards and recently there are quite cheap boards, I would say, built by a Chinese company. It's called NH7020, which is, with, that has the same IPGA as, as the Z board. We are working on the Z board. Uh, currently the progress is significant, but still some issue we need to solve. I believe Z board is possible and currently maybe Z board or 7020 is the minimum IPGA we can use for this project. Okay, last try to push you. <laughs> if you are not sure should I use it or not, actually you are not obliged to use it. <laughs> Just try to uh, do some advertisement, although it's forbidden here, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> So, uh, well, just like the first version of uh, Linux, right? At the beginning, I don't think Linux uh, target is to uh, a beat IBM Unix, a beat HP Unix, right? At the beginning, it's just uh, a mimic work of the Minix, uh, which is used to teach students the operating system, right, in the university. That's just the uh, first mimic work of the, from uh, Linux. Uh, because she is not satisfied with the Minix uh, license condition, if I remember correctly. So he made the Linux first version by his own in his dorm and then release it. Uh, so what happens next, right, in the past many years you have seen. So we hope uh, more and more people can just to try the open Wi-Fi project, uh, not just to compare our design to the commercial Wi-Fi chip. Uh, uh. That will help us a lot. Yeah, talk is cheap. Show me the code. Yeah, you can find the, our code on the GitHub. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe, uh, well, this is a normal uh, presentation. I will ask you a question. <laughs> uh, actually, we have observed this phenomenon a long time ago. The community in the CPU domain, 
right? Computer science domain. Uh, the open source uh, activity there is quite a lot. They are quite active. Risk five, ARM, Intel CPU, right? Linux, many open source projects, even open source firmware, right? Open source BIOS. On the other side, in the connection domain, uh, Wi-Fi connection, cellular chip, Wi-Fi chip, Bluetooth chip, all the connection chip for the uh, radio link. Uh, this domain is quite close. Almost all the connection silicon are black box. Uh, I don't know why, so I ask this question. Meanwhile, I try to do something in this domain to do this open source Wi-Fi chip. So, talk is cheap. Show me the code. I have to show you something. Not the real code, but I try to explain a little bit about the whole project building blocks, right? Uh, at the bottom, this is the R front end in the black. This is uh, AD9361. There were two, uh, two RX, two TX, ADC, DAC, right? And fortunately, they have the AGC module inside uh, front end. So our baseband only need to read the real-time AGC gain to assist, to assist our IPGA to calculate real RSSI. That's the front end, which is not built by us. Okay, uh, on top of the front end, the blue one is the IPGA building blocks. At the beginning, we thought, okay, Wi-Fi implementation, maybe we implement the OFDM transmitter, OFDM receiver, hook it with Linux, then that's it, we're done, we celebrate. <laughs> Finally, we realized, no, it's way more and more complicated than your imagination, way more and more things than just the physical layer signal processing. You see the physical layer is over here, open OFDM RX, open OFDM TX. These two physical layer bl uh, block they take IQ sample or take packet, right? Then generate packet or generate IQ sample. Then huge things are out, out, out of the physical layer. This branch is for the re receiver path. We have a DDC, a tunnel selection, fit IQ to the physical layer, then take the packet to the Linux. Meanwhile, uh, not all the packet will go to Linux. If you check the Linux uh, Mac 802.11 framework, they tell you what should you do in the Wi-Fi chip. They, you should do a, a packet filter. Linux, otherwise, the workload of Linux is too much. Here, we also need to uh, do the handle all the DMA stuff, RX DMA from IPGA to Linux. We set up ring buffer DMA actually keep keep running in the background. In the driver, we check the DMA status. That's why we know what's the state, what's the latest packet. In the central is all the CSMA low MAC layer in IPGA. You need lots of uh, functionality. You can check the standards. They define everything very clearly. You need CCA, right? Detect channel is busy or not. Two methods. Based on RSSI, RSSI has to be precise, right? Otherwise, you have wrong answer. Based on preamble, which is from the OFDM receiver status. OK, you output channel status to the CSMA CA engine. In this engine, you do the random back off, right? According to your contention window, et cetera, all the parameters in the standard. You also need to do the virtual carrier sensing. Virtual carrier sensing means that uh, you monitor all the packet in the channel ongoing. In those packet, there's a, a field called duration. The duration tells you that transaction, transaction or that interaction will occupy the channel for how long, for how many microseconds. That's called the virtual carrier sensing. You, to get that information, you have to pass the, all the packet incoming, pass the duration field, not only actually, you, you also need to pack MAC address, MAC everything, fit to the CSMA. And packet filter also need this pass result. And you generate the ACK CTS reply in real time, do retransmission in IPGA, because Linux give you a packet. Meanwhile, Linux will tell you, for this packet, you should try this MCS for how many times? Try that MCS for how many times? IPGA, you need to do that. Linux, wait for your result. Work hard. So wait for the ACK, right? When you send the packet, your IPGA need to wait for the ACK. Uh, otherwise, you cannot tell, li tell Linux that this transmission is successful or not. This is uh, a TX pass, which do the reverse uh, processing as the RX. Okay, above IPGA, those are driver modules. AD driver communicates with the front end directly to do the channel tuning, right? TX, RX stuff. 
and the uh, TX inter interface driver configure this part, the uh, DMA driver, right? The Stylinx DMA driver. We use we re, we modify Stylinx DMA driver, tailored for the for the case, and uh, TX Arcs driver DMA driver. Basically, those driver configure the IPGA registers, functional uh, registers to control the behavior of your IPGA design. Above the driver, okay, that's the fortunate thing. Linux define everything. Mac 80211 framework. Linux define whole bunch of APIs they need. You don't need to implement them all, but you need to implement necessary subset, right? To support ad hoc mode, AP mode, station mode, or monitor mode. Different mode need different combination of those Linux APIs. Okay, basically that's the whole design of the open Wi-Fi. Questions? <laughs> okay, please. Yeah. Uh, a simple question. So, uh, could you please have a look at this uh, CPU subsystem? Yeah, right. Yeah. So once you do the virtual camera sensing, mm -hmm. uh, what about in the time the Linux subsystem send one thing? So where is the logic to handle this? OK, the question is, uh, when we do virtual carrier sensing, if the packet comes from Linux, what should we do, right? Uh, yeah, which logic? Uh, which yeah. OK, OK. Uh, for the TX pass, actually, there, there are two queues. Actually, Linux asks uh, the chip uh, with better has at least uh, four queues. But currently, we implement two. It's still just a work. So all the packet comes from Linux. They cannot go outside immediately, right? First into the queue. A CSMA engine will decide when is the right timing for next packet to go outside. Different queue could have different priority or different purpose, such as for beacon, for data, something. But there is a lot of flex flexibility. So that means that when you do carry sending, hopefully you can send out other high priority packets, but hold on these low priority packets, right? If the, the sensing module believe there's a chance for us to transmit, right? Then we can select uh, one queue, one packet from one queue to transmit. Thank you. Is anyone else leaving? Okay, could you go <coughs> ahead and leave? <laughs> <laughs> I realize it's getting a little bit confusing. Uh, maybe that, yeah. Uh, you, you. CSI information, right? Uh, currently, you can capture the CSI in IPGA. But I think we will do that because one benefit of software defined radio is that we can have deep access to the physical layer. Uh, please. Uh, please. Are you? Okay, thank you. Okay, you. Yes, yes, their front end actually is quite complicated. I believe there are firmware, there are lots of digital processing. Uh, but yeah, but follow, this. Follow up on that point, have you looked at the RF SOC chip instead of the yeah. MP SOC? RF SOC? Yeah. Oh, I know that uh, latest generation with high speed ADC DAC, right? Uh, maybe we will try it later. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you still have a question? I know you're obligated to What are your, like your next priorities on this? Uh, next priority. Uh, next pro priority, I think uh, uh, we, we still need to test the design with many uh, uh, commercial device compatibility issue. For instance, currently it works with uh, laptop, uh, uh, iPhone, but we, we do identify. We'll need the microphone. Okay. We do know that, for instance, the OnePlus Android phone uh, always has issue with our design. So maybe it's related to the different chip has different signal quality. We still need to debug. We try to make it more uh, stable and uh, compatible to as, ma as many as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Everyone is good. Uh, Talking. 
somehow there's this funny algorithm from the organizer of this 